<laughs> is it diminished? So you are now reacting to Korea's very first idol group, H.O.T., and their song Aya, released in 1999. Aya! No <laughs> you may be wondering, whoa, why are we reacting to a song that was released in the 90s? Yeah, I am wondering, why are we reacting to this song? Is that how I talk? That's not how I talk! <laughs> Quick answer is, you'll see the second the song starts playing. A much longer answer is, SM Entertainment has this awesome remastering project going on where they release old music videos in 4K. Wow. Let's go! That's crazy. Let's go! So fun fact, there's a 4K version of SNSD's Into the New World. Ah! Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'll watch that. <laughs> no more 360p. That latte never looked so good. <laughs> the thing about remastering the video in 4K means the audio quality would be more on par with the... Yeah. So with this project, SM says they're taking a look at the K-pop history once again in the wake of the global K-pop revival. In addition, they are trying to promote the old K-pop not only to fans who liked music at the time, but also to the younger generation and global music fans. Makes sense. H.O.T. were pioneers in the K-pop world as a boy group that was created specifically to appeal to the Korean teen market. Up until this point, they did not hesitate to release controversial songs, and Aya was a track which emphasized social awareness. Although it is not officially mentioned, most people guess that the song is about the specific accident of 23 kindergartners dying in a school fire. The news of the kindergartners hit Korea hard, and it rose up serious discussions about society in general and their treatment of children. This was largely in part because of the fact that the children were locked in the room that caught fire while supervisors were away. Aya reflected on the disillusionment of the youth of Korea who could not comprehend the tragic events. Dang, and their yeah. first idol group. The song is composed by Yoo Young Jin. Yeah, so first was Seo Taeji and the Boys. So that was the, the first yeah. K-pop group. They kind of like invented K-pop and then H.O.T. were the first idol group. They created the idol training system. Oh, that's so cool. That okay, let's watch some history. You ready? Three, two, one. Yeah, 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 this, yeah. Oh my god, yeah. Mm. Oh man, throwback. <laughs> Is this Mozart? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mozart's best pieces are all in minor. I think Mozart just powers up whenever he writes in minor. Yeah, this is like Mozart with distorted Green Day guitars. This is like freaking. Why are we in E now? Okay. This is different. <laughs> yeah! Oh my god! Oh. Swung ride. That do go hard though. Yeah. yeah. That do go hard. Yeah, this is very angry. <laughs> um, I'm surprised the drums are as light as they are though. That's I would expect brutal. something heavier. Yeah. You're right. Huh. Oh my god, it's um... I don't know his name, but I know him. Really? Yeah. That's fire. He's like on like variety shows a lot. Oh, gotcha. Oh, this is very Rage Against the Machine. <laughs> Whoa, cool. Non distinct. Yeah! <laughs> that was really great vocal arrangement. That was pretty sick. Yeah. I love that harmony that they added in there. I've heard this chorus before. <laughs> Is it diminished? Also, Edward Scissorhands. Edward Scissorhands, yeah. Wolverine, all these yeah. very strange plots. Oh, wait, Mozart comes back. Dang, this sample's crazy. What is going on? Wow, this is very different. 1999. That's pretty... I'll be burning my kids. That's a pretty big freaking call out. 
I love the panning with this. Oh my god, the synths are going nuts. Child. Child looking sexy. Tear. Oh my god, yeah. This is sad though. Yeah. Uh, the lyrics are interesting. It's just a lot of kids. Be Whoa. What? <laughs> like Sonata? What? I liked it. <laughs> Banger. I can't use words to describe this. What is that blue thing? Totally it's fake. Water. All of it's fake. Mm. Oh, I love the Street View stuff. It's so 90s movie. Even 2000s. Just hard cut to E minor again. I do like the different keys and... The classical excerpts, they chose to retain the original keys. Yeah, just the really nice harmonies here. Like, it's like appealing to the masses, like pleading. Why? It's the Bohemian totally Rhapsody new. of... <laughs> oh my god! Whoa! The head voice! <laughs> Was that 6 8? What are they doing? I love the 4K brings back the 90ness like way more. Wow. Wow. I thought we were done and then that happened. <laughs> wow, that was a lot to digest. As some entertainment though. Where are we? They're a staple. That's powerful. Wow we. Wow we. Why that powerful? They're screaming a lot and they're rapping with a lot of like high intensity vocal timbre is the best way I can say they're sort of like shouting almost. And there's like really high pitched strings all the time. And the guitar is very distorted. That's where the power comes from. What I was most intrigued by, the melody and the instrumentation didn't feel as like canned and almost samey as kind of the second gen K-pop like, that I'm used to that I really like as well. Like this is really explorative. And I'm like, where did they go? Where, where did this go? Where did, what happened to this? I like this sound a lot. It's, it, it reminds me more of something I might hear like the like musical choices they would make like these days. Wow, there's nothing like that we'd ever hear like listening to any other K-pop thing. I mean, that was kind of see, like, totally the seeds of there are right? there are definitely some tendrils that that connect it, but like it's a whole different game. It feels um, like yeah, the way they take from I guess Western styles is a bit more pure back then. Now there's a lot of like oh they're fusing things together, you know, and like they've fused things enough where the fusion itself becomes the music. Like oh yeah, there's going to be a funk guitar. There's going to be this poppy style and then a drop sort of here it it feels kind of creatively wild and yet it does also embrace it's like a sign of the times thing right i don't know if back then this was considered really really cool but it definitely shows its datedness a little bit today but i think i enjoy it more because of that sam thoughts on your your very first time hearing this 90s song that was really f loud but it was really <laughs> It was, I mean, it was entertaining. I think that's the first time I ever heard you curse. Edgy rock like that is not where my ear tends to draw its fancy. That's such an interesting way of saying this is not my cup of tea. For somebody, this is, this is their thing. It's just not mine. Yeah, see, for someone, it's somebody's thing. No, but in all honesty, I think it's, I think it's good. I, you can definitely tell that there are things that have drawn inspiration from this in my opinion and that they've drawn inspiration from other things and especially in how they use those classical influences Ju Young talked about the 6-8 time when they were really speeding things up in the end my favorite part of the song is the Beethoven part because I felt as though it was the first time in which it had this kind of like subtlety to it honestly as, as cheesy as the Moonlight Sonata was I was actually very impressed by the placement of it it felt like at that part of the bridge, it was the right time to do a 
hard cut a mood change like that. If the Moonlight Sonata did not have that reputation, I actually would think it was a rather tasteful use of it. And the melody they wrote above it was kind of cool too. Right, yeah. What are your thoughts on them mixing in Mozart and Beethoven into this track about um, commentary on society and the treatment of children? Or maybe an easier question to answer would be, how do you think uh, hard rock and, <laughs> and classical music mash up together? It was kind of interesting. I did notice like that they, they doubled up like electric guitar and string sounds. Like at, like towards the beginning. Of yeah, the I thing, think it made is, sense though. Yeah, just it like kind of with worked. the the clash of the genres, but also like there is a commonality with like the darkness of the the pieces and the song that they were about to get into. I was just not expecting the Moonlight Sonata, and so that when that happened, I was like, oh my god, what? <laughs> right. Yeah. And can we talk more about the atmosphere they created? We talked a lot about the the texture of the hard uh, sounding distorted guitars, but can we talk about like the notes they chose for the lick and rhythms they chose oh, for the yeah. rap and why? Yeah, I actually wanted to go back and figure out because there was like, it was like guitar and then like these really loud notes that were pretty um, like dissonant. I kind of want to listen to the whole thing again. <laughs> Three, two, one. I think it's a G minor. Got it. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that last note leading into it is very much diminished. Yeah, so that's E. Mm -hmm. That's E, right? E minor. Yeah. Oh! Oh, that's so cool. Go back, go back. I want to hear that again. Yeah, then they go right down oh that's cool that's really cool it's so simple but it is so effective that the e minor yeah that nine yeah, yeah where they yeah, land the on nine. that nine da, 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 da. what is that from what da, 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 da. yeah that's just a lot of interesting crunchy harmonies going on. Um, it's just like such a different type of music, especially like in comparison, like what we just listened to, where it's just like what we were talking about earlier, like very overproduced, but like in a different, it's just completely different style, right? And that's just like how music has transformed. But right here like in the 1990s, you know, in early 2000s, like it was still very like rocker-esque mainstream. And it's, it's like, there's not as much going on with the actual production, but it, there doesn't have to be there to, have to get be that to message across. Yeah. When they when they got into like the main verse, like immediately that like brought me to freaking like Rage Against the Machine vibes. Just like with the social commentary and the angst in the vocals. Like that that whole vibe that they brought. The stuff that I listen to is a lot about going against like society's norms and to really make a statement. And because of like what inspired this song, I, the messiness and like the distorted clash of like instruments really shows how upset they are about this certain situation. And like for the time itself, like in K-pop, like um, I talked to my parents about this. I used to fight about this so much with my parents about like <laughs> me like blasting punk rock in my room or just like a genre like this. And um, in Korea, this is it this isn't normal. This is basically like something you're not supposed to be listening to because it's like, you know, it's gonna mess up these kids, blah, 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 blah. But look at me, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a music, so I'm fine, you know, I have my curls yes. and just, you know. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, and like them breaking these standards was, is also another thing you can put into like context and like why this was such a huge thing in Korea and to their fans and just like in, pop culture in general. And then just the lyric thing for me that was a little bizarre was like putting out the kids spark. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the word play there. Like I didn't want to imagine this horrible tragedy. With like spark and fire. Yeah. Like that's I, a little, I that's didn't a little appreciate that. to put out these children's sparks that have yet to be lighted. Yeah, that's yeah, a little. I was just kind of like. That's a little fucked up to be talking about straight up. Like that's kind of like, oh, Let's just not walk into a high school and shoot these kids again. Like, like really using hard. like the words but I, like but that. that is the I'm point trying, though. I think they're trying to be hard. That is right? the really? point. Yeah, Damn. I think it's that kind of art because it made me yeah. think and I'll wake up like 
not wake up, but I'll, tomorrow I'll still be thinking about it. I think that's what good art does, you yeah. know? You know what, Pumped Up Kicks did do that though. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I think that's what would be the same thing with this. Yeah, have you seen the influence of this song on the more recent songs we've listened to? No. Not really. <laughs> genre switches? I feel oh, well, genre yeah, switches, I yes. Well, I got a boy with the different section changes. I think that's the biggest example. Like in this, you hear like, oh, they're putting a lot of things together, like samples and like classical stuff and like blah, 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 blah. And I think that kind of like got refined as the years went by and as they started creating like these new boy groups and girl groups. And I think like, I feel like NCT is a great example of it. Lots of different sounds going on, um, different sections, but like it's, it's less noticeable because they know how to like connect everything now, if that makes sense. Do you have a favorite section or a part of the song? Just any time he like screamed, like you can tell his, no, listen. <laughs> but you can tell that they were like experimenting a lot during this time. And um, I mean, look at SM now, they're, they're thriving with this experimentation thing. So I think they've really done it. They've really done it. They've they really, they done, really it. done it. So what year did this Sorry. come out in? 1999. 1999. That's really interesting. I was being conceived. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. 